Hey everybody, we have Alicia here, and Alicia is going to show us mom and dad's house. We're going to take a look around and get the whole tour. All right, so we just have these really lovely shrubs. I mean, <laughs> they do a great job trimming them. They look perfect. I like your screened in porch. Yes, uh, we recently redid it. We took out all of the old screen, put in new aluminum screen, repainted everything. Of course, that was a few months ago. <laughs> oh, it looks beautiful. I can't nice. believe y'all redid that yourselves. Yes, very comfortable. Okay, we have some bluebird houses. Bluebirds actually moved in within one hour after we put them up which is really amazing. They were house shopping that soon. Look at that. I guess y'all picked a great spot for them to so. move in. <laughs> All right, so we have some cornfields on the side, which actually makes a really wonderful head. It seems very private. And also along the back, quite a bit of farmland. We can go over here to the, sort of just the back seating area. I know, that's quite amazing that we have um, farmland on three sides. We have um, just some rose bushes, gardenias, and those are some sort of fiery ornamental bush. They turn red in the fall. Hydrangea. Ooh. And uh, of course, uh, we, we repainted this. Let's take a closer look. We're gonna take a closer look at this amazing little bench. Yeah, it wasn't original, so we had no scruples with repainting it, actually, when we found out that it was sort of a, a remake already. Um, anyhow, look at the view. When you sit here, it's very relaxing because it's farmland. Um, sometimes we have deer that come up, even as far as the crepe myrtle trees over here. So this bench right here, y'all bought it and it was a little old. Um, oh yeah. What did y'all do Rusted to it? Rusted and all kinds of, well, we just, um, we used a, a, a paint that can be painted over top of rust and then an enamel because this is all uh, cast iron. And we of course uh, decided not to stain the wood. Uh, you know <laughs> so you you took something that was a little old and fallen apart and turned it into something beautiful y'all refurbished it um precisely and we bought it second hand or third hand you know it, it was obviously <laughs> very old but we bought it at a good price and here now we have a nice backyard bench and they repainted all of the detailing here themselves yes and i like the colors y'all chose as well Mm-hmm. that's good looks beautiful excellent thank you and I like that it's sitting on these stony bits. Um, these were just laid down. Yeah, like yeah. a little bit of, it looks almost like flagstone, but it's cement. It looks really nice. So tell us about this structure over here. Oh, this is just a small little uh, backyard firing range for pistols or whatever. It's dad's shooting range. Right. Um, you can put up some, you know, some targets. There's a way to do that. There's a nice little um, structure that you can be set into the ground. So we have these holes in the ground that we put targets in. And actually you can see the wildflowers are just starting to bloom. Um, oh, like you see these little guys, we threw a whole packet of wildflower seeds on this. Oh, wow. To just kind of stabilize the sand because it's filled with sand. So it doesn't erode. Mm -hmm. But also to give it a little bit more color so you have these blue flowers, yellow flowers. They're only just now starting to bloom, of course. Red, pink, pink, red ones up there and some white ones all in here. I not, love it's it. Not, it's not fully bloomed yet, but <laughs> it's coming along. It's supposed to be four seasons worth of flowers. Uh, we have some forsythias on each corner. So those big yellow blue uh, bushes that bloom in the spring, they were nice this year. Oh, wow. A uh, couple of pecan trees. And would be lovely when they get big. I want to walk around the back because I think it's interesting. Like you think a firearm range. Let's see how many bullets actually make it through. Well, in general, you're aiming low. 
But look at that. There's no holes in the back of this, which means y'all guys did a great job at building it. Like the, the bullets aren't coming through the back end. Right, well, as long as you're aiming low into the sand, actually, um, dad comes back here and he harvests the lead. Mm -hmm. he, he'll come out here with a pail, he'll, he'll pick it up, he'll remelt it down and then forge it into new bullets. Yeah. He, he basically just puts it in this continuous recycling loop, the lead from the bullets. Yeah, he's great at recycling. And fun fact, I was actually homeschooled part of my high school and one of my classes that I took was making bullets. My dad, our dad is really, hit one of his favorite hobbies is guns and knives and bullets. And he makes the bullets himself that he shoots out of his guns. This is a great practicing range to yeah. try, out, try out his work. Definitely. Okay, so this is the structure that of course has been shot through. Uh-huh. Um, but these posts would go into the into the ground and these pre-dug pre-drilled post holes that we have a pipe like a pvc pipe stabilizing so mm -hmm. it just it just sets right down in and it comes down you know a good way so that this is almost at the ground level and this field i remember last time i was here we were growing soybeans but right now it's not growing anything it's yes. it's natural it's actually more than 200 acres it goes way back into the forest over there it actually curves and wraps around some to the right of these trees. Wow. Yeah, it's very, uh, super. love it. I think these pecan trees are adorable. Yes, we have a Pawnee on the left and an Elliot on the right that will cross pollinate with each other. It'll provide an enormous amount of shade once they're grown many years from now. <laughs> yeah. And um, they grow fast. You'll yes. have, you'll have fruit before you know it. And yet we'll still have room for a pool in the middle one day. <laughs> one day. There's a great spot for a pool. We did actually consciously think, what if, let's just leave it alone in the middle just because let it. Yeah. Like a small little pool. You have, you have plenty of time to decide. So in the corner we have a Hollywood juniper. That, that taller piece right there. Yes, yeah, so it'll be about 15 feet tall, about 5 feet wide. And it was... And it initially thought that this would grow into sort of a rose hedge and providing a little bit of privacy on this side. Yes. And then these small shrubs that have been uh, cut down and regrown many times are some chrysanthemums. They produce these extremely fragrant white flowers. And just about every year they die off and so they, they usually come back. <laughs> so they are perennial but they they lose their vegetation. And in this region they do, it gets too cold for them to stay. So you see them throughout the area and they all turn black and you just cut the vegetation off and they come back every year. Wow. From a bold, actually. Yeah. Your roses are doing amazing. I see some blooms over there. I like the different colors that you've chosen. Yes, I, I like that as well. Originally, on the other side, we have all pink knockout roses, but I really liked some variety. I, they all have different fragrances as well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are starting gardens in our very first year. Uh, so it <laughs> it is doing okay with the okra, the tomatoes. We've had a lot of cucumbers. The, computer, the cucumbers are sort of dying out a little bit now, but... Um, and then here in front we have cantaloupe and tiger melon. I just like standing back and admiring. I think I've done a great job this being your first year gardening and I know over here in the corner you can't see but we, they actually harvested potatoes yesterday so they got quite a bit of potatoes. Mm -hmm. I want to say y'all probably got maybe five to ten pounds of potatoes because y'all didn't even pick all of the, toma the tomatoes, all of the potatoes out yet. So that's really good. I really liked that it was off the ground too. I think it made it easy to to mow in between, for instance. Oh yeah, y'all have a, a lot of grass in between the hedges, and then also taking a weed eater around the uh, edges was really easy to do. So did you think about that when you built this? The spacing that you would want to fit a lawnmower between these rows. We did. That's good. Yes. And I like your trellises that you have. Um, let's take a look. I saw y'all have some melons. This looks similar to my Charente melon. Is this what, is that what this is? Do y'all know what variety of melon this is? I think that this is 
Let's see. He looks like he's coming from over there. Been maybe Hale's best or just a, just a general cantaloupe. It, it was probably a cantaloupe because we had those all in here, but we also had the tiger melons kind of up in here in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's getting, it's coming along. I know you can tell when these are ripe when, the, when you can walk by and it'll smell like cantaloupe. And they do have another little melon, a familiar one that we have growing in Lauren's garden, that we have growing in my garden right here. He's a little guy and he'll be ripe when he turns orange. But we also have some mint and some carrots and they're, they're doing really good. We pulled out a carrot, a couple carrots yesterday and I think they need to go a little bit longer. I think when the weather gets a little cooler they'll probably do a little better. But they're growing really good here in the summer. I think our primary issue is how exposed this location is and how hardening um we i think we rushed hardening a little bit too fast and so oh yeah several plants didn't survive that particular stage of putting out here in this very unshaded <laughs> place yeah hardening off is really important but plants do adapt a little bit and it looks like y'all had a great number of oh, yeah. successes as Absolutely. well I see this looks like okra. It, it looks like it's the Alabama red. It has those red stems. And y'all have a couple flowers that are about to um, flower. So mm -hmm. y'all are gonna have buckets of okra pretty here pretty soon. Yes. And this little cucumber plant is has been just thriving until this week. Yeah, we left on our trip. Yes. Very prolific. Lots of cucumbers out of this plant. Got a cucumber right there. It looks like there's a couple. That one's kind of round. One over there. Most of them have been round and stubby, not the ones you see in the grocery store. So I'm not sure what variety this is, but it has been perfect for personal sized like salads or just oh, having a yes. salted cucumber. Like I like to eat them salt, pepper, and a little oil. And lovely tomatoes. I think salt, pepper, and oil is a great on a lot of things. Tomatoes, cucumbers. Yes. That's how I like to eat them. It's just like that. Little peppers. We mm -hmm. see a pepper right here. We're not sure what variety this is, but I think it's really cute. <laughs> it has a lot of little peppers on it. Lots of flowers. It looks like your tomatoes are doing really good. They are. They have different fruits. Sort of flowers. on the smaller side, but that makes it just more personal sized, I think. Yeah. Large enough to eat in one sitting. We actually had a sliced tomato right from this garden this morning with our breakfast casserole. We do have one bean plant. I would have liked, I think, next time around to have more bean plants just to produce more beans, uh, bush bean variety. I, I really like the bush beans as well. I grew some bush beans this year, and I agree. I think. It, it's beneficial to grow a large volume because yes. they don't put a whole lot of beans off on each plant. But this is just one example of um, one of the species that didn't quite survive the hardening process the way we would have liked. So this one obviously is thriving. However, its brothers and sisters are not here. Anymore. So this was a whole bean area and Precisely. we have the lone survivor. Precisely. I could say that there were probably at least six plants, at least, oh. in this section. That's okay. Yeah. But that's good. I think that as long as you are growing and having fun, there's things to learn every season and you just can only get better as you go. And there's mom there hanging up the laundry on the line. Yep. Let's go say hi to mom. And then maybe we'll get to go see some of these beautiful chickens I'm looking at on our neighbor's yard. I love your white crepe myrtles. Oh, yes. They actually were much larger, but a couple years ago there was a strong frost that took out the trees. So the thing about crepe myrtles is you can always just cut them back and here they are. Now they're, they look little. They look like they're young, but they're actually very old wow. trees. Did the frost kill this one right here? Yep, that one didn't survive, so we turned it into something of utility. <laughs> I saw some birds eating out of your feeder this morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> but the great thing about the bird feeders is that 
by feeding them, we've actually attracted so many more varieties and so many more quantities of birds to the area. So it's when good you come for outside, bird watching. yes, lots of bird watching, but also lots of songbirds. So it sounds very peaceful out here whenever you come out. So you have the privacy, that serenity, and the sounds of nature all Absolutely. in one. Oh wow, I love it. It's and beautiful. these mature trees really make um, quite a haven here in the middle of this farmland because it can be quite sunny mm -hmm. here in Virginia. And it's a little more humid here. It is. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want these mature trees. Yeah. Mom thinks it's going to rain. It feels good. I think it's going to I hope your clothes are going to dry because I couldn't get it to spin all the way. I had to pull it out early. It smells good. Huh? It smells good. It smells like clean clothes. Got the sand off. That was so nice for Alicia to show us around mom and dad's house. This is not where I actually grew up. I was born here in Virginia, but I was primarily raised in central Texas. I am more familiar with like anywhere between Austin and San Antonio area of Texas. And as soon as I graduated high school and moved off to college, my parents moved back here to Virginia to be closer to family, like my grandparents who are getting older, and to be able to spend more time with other family like my aunts and uncles, which is also just really lovely. So I am so proud of them coming out here and making this home again, where they were born and raised. And I think they are happy to be back in this beautiful state. Here across the street, they have cotton growing. I think this is beautiful. Look at this back country road. Look at the flowers on the cotton. Oh my goodness, those are beautiful. very peaceful. I've been out here before and you can hear quail. I love how tall their trees are. We don't seem to get trees quite this tall in Texas. I mean there's some parts of Texas but not in the desert. <laughs> Bread or, or oh. any treats for the chicken? Let me get some fun. <laughs> Mom and Alicia are going to introduce us to their neighbor's beautiful chickens. She wanted to go get some treats for the girls. You, that's a we got that out on sale that $50 tree the juniper yep and planted it and it's done so well he was in the this these things are dying like pilot blowers oh yeah. he's clearance but tree he looked great he looked so good it's like almost he was mistaken as a fan I got you something you'll like it oh you know how chickens you know mm -hmm. look how amazing his garden is Oh yeah, he has a beautiful garden. Yeah, he's got uh, cucumbers and melons on the other side. I think it helps the shade of the house and the trees maybe. Yeah. Hi girls, they're pretty. Tick, tick, they know me. Look at them. Got he's some, got something coming. They are so pretty. I know, we got some buff Orpingtons and Leghorns and oh, you know Australorps and you. Rhode Island Reds. Tick, tick, tick. Look hey at girls. Uh-oh, something's coming. Oh, they're beautiful. You girls are pretty. Come on, baby. I like how they sound. I and I love the red ones. I love the blonde ones and the red mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, the red ones are so rich. His Australorps are really pretty too, or they they might be Jersey Giants, I guess. Yeah, they just keep expanding and that's great. They run. If you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. I know the buffs have really calm personalities. Look at them. Aren't they fun? 
Yeah, they're beautiful. Beautiful girls. He has a beautiful setup. He does have a nice setup, doesn't he? Yeah. And Alicia was saying he also free ranges them. Yeah, he lets them Oh, it looks like this tomato didn't make it into the girls. I'm gonna go get this one over here. Hey, girls. Y'all are pretty. Yeah, those look like Yasha. The black ones? Yeah, the black ones. We have one Australorp. So that makes sense. You keep the young ones away from the big ones so the big ones don't hurt them. But it actually looks like it's now fully opened up. Like if they wanted to come over here and see the gates open, they mm. could just come around. Wow. This is a good, good space. You see how this one looks maybe a little bit younger than the others. Oh yeah. But not, not but like a chick any longer. Obviously. Her comb is red. So typically when their comb turns from pale to red, they mm -hmm. are laying age and they can lay. Mm -hmm. I thought there was some in there. He had put his new ones in there. Now he's opened the gate and letting them be together. They are all looking so beautiful. Yeah, don't they look healthy? Look at these Very lovely good feathers. Blue yeah. ones. I mean, not blue ones, brown ones. Yeah, it looks like these are the pellets. You see how their pellets are girls that aren't laying age yet. So the, yeah, the, I think he told me that some weren't laying yet. Yeah, these reds, they have small, small combs and they're pale. So one of those must be Alicia. Yeah, <laughs> one I of the chickens. 15. I thought there were more. So um, I think he said, well, he had one die. Um, a possum got it one night, took its head Aww, off. Well, that's sad. And he, he had forgotten to put them up. And so now he knows he puts them in their cages at night. Yeah. Um, Poor girls. It looks like some of those, it looks like her, the, the buff Orpington here, is also a pellet. The um, brown? Light the room? light ones. So like you see how their their combs are pale? Whenever they turn bright red, they'll start laying eggs. Oh. Okay. You see like how pale hers is? So had gotten some new ones um, earlier in the fall, in the spring. So. Beautiful girls. You're beautiful girls. Do you have broccoli like that? Oh yeah. That's nice looking. Mm -hmm. He has a beautiful garden. Yeah, he's been getting eggplant cucumbers broccoli and lots of tomatoes squash zucchini i love his setup this is a great chicken run and alicia was telling me he has it separated by age so he'll keep the young ones separate he mm -hmm. did when they were he did when, when they, they were, were little when they were tiny because mm -hmm. he had some mature and some little chicks yeah so do they hop up in there on their own at night i think so he, they all go in there very nice and, and i like that he can places. He can close it to where it's fenced, and then if it's cold, he can shut the other door to completely close yeah. it. Uh -huh. That's neat. And he can get the eggs from the other side, because he's got um, two or three or four egg pen laying things. I guess he must be on his computer. He Hi, girls. Know I'm out here. He hasn't come out yet. Usually, he comes visit. It almost here. looks like these four red ones are the same age. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And their feathers are really, really nice. Same I wonder if that, that black one's going to go lay. Mm -hmm. Listen to her chit chat. And, and yes. those two blonde ones. So it's almost That's like. That's a good, good job. See, sounds like she needs to get. That's what that ladder's mm -hmm. there for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it she's going like in there. Watch her. The same age. Yep, she's telling them, it's my turn. Is there one in there? There might be. Oh, there's. Yeah, These girls are pretty. <laughs> and the leghorns, which are the white ones, are one of the most productive breeds. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The red ones are really productive, too. And then the, the blonde ones are really sweet demeanors, and they can have a tendency to go broody, which is sit on the eggs to hatch them. I think these are the most prettiest ones. I love yeah. the rich color, and they're... they're Wings are just, I mean, their feathers are just perfect. <laughs> Who is she talking? Is there someone in there talking? She's talking to There must be someone in there, right? All right. We got the grand tour. Mom and Dad's house. I need to get myself inside because I have a pool party to get ready for.